Welcome back to the Warehouse Podcast. My name is Jesse. As usual, before I get into the episode here, I'm uh, going to read this ad. Uh, Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football from the preseason NFL to college kicking off. Bet Online is every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. Think you know your stuff? Get in on our winner take all. $300,000 NFL survivor pool for the upcoming season. When the game's over, head on over to uh, our online casino, get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today and use promo code believe to get in on the action bet online. The game starts here. I will say uh, before I really start this episode, one of my, uh, <laughs> appreciations from Tyler's last episode was that he had the uh the ad the ad read up on the screen while he was doing the ad so I really appreciated that um and yeah we are a baseball and uh you know MLB Orioles podcast explicitly uh so that's really the only only football we'll be getting into is is from that ad read um yeah uh so Anyway, uh, basically, uh, I thought I would get on here. Um, the Orioles are approaching the final quarter of the season, so I thought I would get on here um, and sort of have uh, open up a little bit of a discussion, I guess a discussion between me and myself, uh, really, but uh, just start uh, talking here a little bit about uh, the last quarter of the season and taking sort of a look at the standings, where we're at, uh, where uh, sort of uh, the Orioles need to go and sort of what the outlook is for the remainder of the season. Um, I think most people know that we're in a, a division race at this point with the New York Yankees. Um, so yeah, just sort of getting into like in an assessment uh, of all of that. So uh, if you look at like sort of uh, the final quarter of the season, the remaining schedule uh, if we're looking strictly at the Orioles and the Yankees moving forward, um, the Orioles have a favorable schedule. Um, they have, uh, according to like record, uh, the 22nd. OK, I'm not going to say this right. So out of the 30 Major League Baseball teams. In terms of favorable schedule. Um, well, no, in, in terms of unfavorable schedule, the Orioles are 22nd on that list. So that is a pretty good place to be. Um, the Orioles have a relatively weaker schedule, um, than, uh, most of the league at this point. Um, so the winning percentage of the teams that we will face moving forward, uh, is currently 492. And the Orioles have 43 games left in the entire season. Um, so the Orioles right now, at the time of recording, the Orioles are 70 and 49. The Orioles were the first team this season to hit 70 wins. Uh, we did that on Saturday. The Yankees followed it up the next day um, and hit 70 wins on Sunday. Uh, incidentally, we lost that game, uh, but the Orioles had an off game on month an off day on Monday and the Yankees played and they lost. So currently the Orioles are half a game up in the division against the New York Yankees. Um, I should also note that the Dodgers now have 70 wins as well. They have an identical record to us at 70 and 49. And, uh, the the Orioles and the Dodgers uh, are the best two teams. Uh, well, actually, with the Guardians as well, uh, are all uh, at the top of Major League Baseball with a 70 and 49 record, which amounts to a 588 winning percentage. So, um, yeah, so the Orioles, in terms of like the remaining strength of the schedule, uh, the Orioles' uh, opponents have a 492 winning percentage. So that's a bit below uh, 500. So it's overall, uh, you know, a favorable schedule. 
The thing is, though, that if you look at the Yankees, uh, the Yankees have a 483. Uh, the Yankee opponents for the rest of the season have a 483 uh, winning percentage. Uh, and the Yankees have the 26th weakest schedule. That's actually how I should have said it starting off. So the Orioles have faced the 22nd. Their remaining schedule is the 22nd weakest for the Orioles. And the Yankees is the 26th weakest schedule out of the 30 major league teams. I know there's probably a better way out there to say all of that. Um, but basically to say that both the Orioles and the Yankees have a favorable schedule moving forward, but the Orioles have it a little tougher than the Yankees do um, going forward. So, uh, and if you just sort of look at, you know, some of the, some of the teams, uh, the Orioles play uh, the really tough team. Uh, I think uh, it uh, is pretty obvious is the Dodgers are still looming on the Orioles schedule. Um, but despite that, the Orioles do have weak teams uh, as well to play. Uh, we're going to start off a two game series with the Nationals. We play the Rockies for three, the White Sox for three and the Tigers for six. Um, so and if you look at uh, the Yankees uh, schedule, um, they play some of those teams as well. They just started off playing the White Sox and they got crushed 10 to two today. Uh, well, or technically. I'm recording this after midnight, but they got crushed 10 to 2 on Monday. I'm recording this after midnight, Monday night, uh, really Tuesday morning. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so the so, yeah, all that to say, basically, the Yankees have a more favorable schedule than the Orioles, um, but uh, just slightly. And, uh, you know, the strength of the schedule is probably not going to be the determining factor. Now, as far as the Orioles and Yankee uh, Yankees matchups, uh, they play each other one time. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, they play each other for one more series. Uh, they play three games, a three game set in the Bronx. Uh, so I'm, I'm tempted to try to go to that, uh, especially because it's so close by to where I live. Um, but basically, yeah, the Orioles uh, go to the Bronx for three games. It's at the very, very end of the schedule, basically. It's like within the last week or so, week and a half or so of the regular baseball season. So probably at that time, a lot might be coming down to that series. Now, if it's not a sweep uh, one way or the other, uh, it might be sort of when we get to that point in time, it might be a situation where uh in order you know one of the two teams has a couple games cushion uh, on the other and one of the teams would really need to sweep in order to uh sort of take full advantage and in order to really uh change the tide of the or change the trajectory of how the division race is going so that might be a situation but if it's not a sweep and it's a two to one series either way, um, of course, it could. That series could be the difference. I mean, the Orioles and Yankees have played, uh, you know, over 100 games this season and were separated by half a game. Uh, and we were tied, if you look, uh, after Sunday, right? So um, things are really, really close. Uh, so that series could just by itself determine um, who ends up getting the first seed and who ends up being a wild card team. Um, but um, yeah, it's sort of complicated. And uh, we'll we'll have to see uh, what ends up, um, you know, there's going to be a lot that happens leading up to that point. Um, so later on down the line, we'll see exactly how important that series is. Um, I think it will be important just from a, uh, if nothing else, if it doesn't matter for the division uh, standings, uh, it will matter, I think, for this is going to be a series that gets played potentially right before the Orioles meet the Yankees in the playoffs. So uh, that how those three games go will be fresh in the memories uh, when the two teams may meet for the playoffs. So I think it's consequential from that perspective. 
Um, so now there is a big question at this point. I mean, it is a little bit uh, of a question. How much should teams value uh, winning the division? Now, I'm not suggesting that anybody should be tanking the division uh, because ultimately, uh, if you don't, if you win the division, it is one less series uh, that you have to win in order to win the World Series. So, from that perspective, um, there is like a solid, solid advantage uh, to having that that buy in the first round. And intuitively, it seems like it would be really helpful because you just finish a 162 game season. And, uh, you know, having a few off days and resting up and being able to set your starting rotation exactly how you want it would seem favorable. Now, the the counterpoint to that is that if we look at the 2023 MLB playoffs, um, both so three out of the four teams that won the division uh, unfo- or that had a bye in the first round, I should clarify, three out of the four teams uh, that, uh, well, they all technically, they all won the division too. Um, but you can win the division and still be playing in the wild card round. Um, but uh, three out of the four teams that had a bye in that first round went out immediately uh, in that first round. So, The Orioles lost to the Rangers. We all know about that. We don't have to relive it. Uh, The Houston Astros uh, were the only team uh, that did advance past that first round, and they beat the Twins. Um, So they were the ones who did have a bye and did get through. Uh, Probably, my guess is, a lot of that has to do with playoff experience. All of those guys on that team, uh, it feels like uh, it's not... It's not... uh, But many of them uh, they have a solid solid core who uh, has a lot of playoff experience and potentially um, my guess is that that preparation and that um, that experience was really helpful Um, and they're always so good in the playoffs just in general Um, and then if you look at the National League um, the Dodgers had a bye um, and they went out uh, to the Diamondbacks uh, after the first round, they lost 3-0. And uh, the Phillies and the Braves, uh, the Braves went out losing to the Phillies 3-1. So, and I, I will also say, um, most of these, I mean, these are five uh, five game series, best of five series. And the Diamondbacks won 3-0. Anybody who watched that series, just the Diamondbacks stormed that series. Uh, the Phillies, um, they beat the Braves 3-1 and the Orioles got swept. So if you're looking at like the three teams, uh, it wasn't even like uh, they lost 3-2, lost the series 3-2. None of them were really that competitive uh, when you look at sort of how it ended up in the final results. So both the World Series, the Rangers and the Diamondbacks last year, were um were wild card teams so that is i think that is like important and it's important to think about um now definitely uh i think that i'm not suggesting that there should be any tanking uh, i don't think it's really a, a you know no major league baseball team i don't think is going to tank um to get the wild card team uh, I don't think that's like a realistic thing. It's, you know, I'm sure there's also, even if a team did find that strategic, there are also, I think, professional sort of standards that, uh, you know, teams hold themselves to where they're not going to intentionally lose games. Um, but with that said, um, uh, the other thing I do want to just say is I think that there hasn't been a lot of, uh, this is one year. It's three out of four teams. Uh, I think that uh, we would have to see more research um, in order to show that the layoff really, really hurts teams. Uh, Again, this is like a newer playoff format, right? So 
um, the the layoff, the the few games that teams aren't playing, we have a really small sample size in assessing. Okay, is this really a disadvantage for teams to to not have this continuity of playing? Um, it seems reasonable enough, especially for hitters, uh, that. I mean, a few days off, you lose your timing, you know, certain mechanical things might, you know, be different. Uh, but I think overall, it's just the timing, not seeing live pitching, et cetera. So you can see an argument for why, uh, you know, actually having counterintuitively having the buy in the first round would be a disadvantage. But there's really, I think, not enough research on that um, in order to justify a really uh any sort of overall assessments that a team or that a fan should not want their team to get a buy in the first round right there's not enough for that and when there does become enough evidence for that i would imagine major league baseball will change the playoff format so that it's not a disadvantage to have a buy in the first round and you know they can actually like uh, be properly rewarding teams, um, you know, in, uh, yeah, or like properly, uh, I don't know, uh, properly giving teams uh, an actual advantage uh, in the in the current playoff format. So when research becomes available that this playoff format isn't working and that teams just cannot overcome uh, four or five days of not playing baseball, uh, then, you know, things will probably change. But until that point, you know, the Orioles should be angling to win the division and to only have to win uh, three series in order to win the World Series instead of four. So that's basically that. Um, so, yeah, the Orioles are now I will just make a couple notes. I did want to just say real quick. So if we look at um couple things. So the Orioles have 43 games left. If the Orioles even win 20 out of the 43, and let's say the O's play sub 500 baseball, which I'm not expecting, I don't think will happen. But if they do, the Orioles would still comfortably make the playoffs with 90 wins. Um, if you look at last year, um, the... Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So actually it's a little off, but so maybe 90 is not exactly comfortable for the Orioles, but the Orioles uh, would have made the playoffs uh, last year uh, with 90 wins. 90 wins was enough for a team in the American League to make the playoffs. But even if the Orioles win uh, 20, 20 out of these remaining 43 games, or um, even if, let's just say, they win 22 of them, uh, the Orioles will be in good position uh, to make the playoffs, right? So even right around 500 baseball the rest of the way should be enough for the playoffs, right? So we're not too worried about that. Um, the other consideration uh, that, you know, people have talked about a little bit is just, um, you know, and this has sort of been a little bit of a theme, is that the Red Sox are sort of, uh, in third place, uh, they got off to a, like a rougher start, but have like improved a bit as the season has gone on. Um, I mean, they're not immediately, they're not playing like fantastic baseball, but they do have some strengths, the team, uh, and currently the Red Sox are seven games behind. So, um, I don't really, uh, think about the Red Sox too much as an actual threat for the division. Um, the Orioles, uh, and the Yankees, um, would really have to struggle going the rest of the way. Now the Red Sox could make a play at the wild card. They're definitely in that conversation, but as far as winning the division being seven games back at this point in the season is a lot. Um, and with only 43 games left for the Orioles, that's not a lot of time to make up a lot of ground. Now, I know that like, you know, some years ago, it must have been 10, 15 years ago. I mean, I know there was like, uh, I think it was like the Mets that uh, choked a seven game lead with like 17 games left in the season or something, something absurd like that. Um, but I think it's, you know, 
I, I don't think the Orioles have to worry too much about that. And they would have to play I, either. They would have to play at a level that is entirely unexpected or the Red Sox would have to play at an elevated level that is entirely unexpected as well. So um, I don't think the Red Sox are, I, you know, I think the Orioles really uh, to the extent that they are checking standings and not just focusing on their own games, et cetera, and not just trying to win every day. Um, I think the Orioles really just have to focus on and think about the Yankees as their competition. Um, so yeah. And, and that's really it, uh, for that. Now, I mean, the one thing, uh, I will say about this as well is, I mean, if we're looking at like the starting pitching, um, this Grayson Rodriguez injury, I think is really going to hurt, even though he's not, um, he's theoretically not supposed to be out too long. Um, he is going to miss a couple starts here at least. And uh, probably three and maybe four. Uh, I'm not positive, actually. But uh, somewhere in this ballpark, uh, at a bare minimum, some two to four starts. And this is this is not great uh, because uh, the Yankees rotation right now uh, is not pitching very well. Um, some of their starters are pitching slightly below uh, sort of where they should be at. Um, and then some of them, there are a couple of them that are that are much worse uh, than where they should be at. Um, I think Stroman and Cortez in particular are really struggling. And then the the other three are not doing is the, they're like not doing terribly, but they're also like not doing um, they're not pitching as well as they're capable of. And sort of, you know, what's I guess to be expected of them, given how good pitchers they are. Um. But with that said, the Yankees rotation is healthy and the Orioles is not. So, um, you know, I, like right now with the starting rotation, I think there's enough reason to be concerned. Uh, Trevor Rogers has not looked great. I don't really feel comfortable with him uh, at this point, like moving forward uh, in the rest of the season. Uh, hopefully, uh, I think that uh, if things go well uh he's not going to be starting in the playoffs for us um but uh yeah i mean it is the orioles do have um some struggles i think with uh the starting rotation dean kramer has been pitching somewhat mediocre uh right now um he's not pitching uh that great i think tyler talked about this since he's returned from the injured list so uh I, and I will just make a note about this because this did just come up again in the race series. But uh, I will say that I am nominating uh, right now. I am nominating Albert Suarez to be uh, for the unsung hero award for the 2024 Baltimore Orioles. Um, I mean, Albert Suarez has just been uh, spectacular. Uh, he's gone in between roles. Um, and yeah, when he pitched, uh, five shutout innings uh, for us, uh, even though, I mean, this is what everyone's been making a big deal about. Like, we haven't won the games he started for us, but he's been really, really clutch uh, coming in, making a couple critical spot starts for us, um, even though we weren't able to win the games. Um, he's been huge. So uh, I'm definitely, uh, yeah, definitely uh, thinking about him for the Unsung Hero Award. Uh, at the end of this year but um yeah i just all that to say that i think for the orioles right now there are concerns with the rotation there are just more general concerns about the offense uh going the rest of the way now definitely the yankees have their whole host of concerns as well they have not been playing great either um but it is just worth saying that uh you know i think like going down uh you know, thinking about the future and thinking about this uh, remaining quarter of the schedule, the Orioles definitely do have some areas that that they need to correct in order to take this division. Um, so that is uh, that. Um, yeah. And I think uh, if we're looking at it, um, I am, you know, I do think um, the Orioles do have uh hopefully um 
I would like to think that the Orioles have a little bit of an edge uh, going the rest of the way. Uh, I don't know, um, you know, how much that is, but I do think it is sort of a toss up at this point, more or less, um, even if uh, you give the Orioles a slight advantage. I think it is around the 50 percent uh number uh who could win you know 53 47 or something like that but um yeah i think it is going to be very very competitive as i said the yankees are a little bit benefited uh because they do have the slightly weaker schedule going the rest of the way um but uh i think that this is uh important for uh the orioles to be thinking about um, and it it's also going to be important to be thinking about when we get down to the last few games of the season. And if we're sort of in a situation, maybe like the last day of the season, you know, the Orioles need a win in order to get the bye. Like, what are we going to do? Are we going to start Corbin Burns uh, on four days rest and sort of risk, you know, if he if we don't make it in or if we lose that game, right? Like, you know, what are the repercussions for the playoffs for us? Though That sort of thing. So sort of uh, aligning and setting up the starting rotation for those final few days, final few games uh, could be really critical trying to potentially um, align the starting, uh, the starting pitchers with, you know, the Yankees and trying to see if you can, uh, yeah, try trying to throw your best pitchers uh, in that series against the Yankees. So um, there's a lot of sort of uh, things like that and quirks that Brandon Hyde is going to have to figure out uh, going the rest of the way uh, in conjunction, of course, with Michael Elias. Um, but yeah, uh, I think uh, that's most of it. Um, yeah, I just sort of wanted to give this overview of the standings. Um, the Orioles, um, so, uh, so the, the other thing that is also, uh, somewhat important, um, is that, okay. So like, uh, the, the third, uh, division, the third division winner, uh, would play, uh, in the wild card round in addition to, uh, the, the, the best, uh, team, so uh, just for like the standings and for the matchups, um, if the Orioles do uh, not win the division, it would be important for. Yeah, it would be important for uh, the. Uh, um, yeah, it would be important for the Orioles to be like the fourth seed headed into the playoffs. Um, and that way you get a home field advantage. So, and there is like some, there is a scenario where the Orioles don't end up having that, right? Um, there is a scenario where, uh, right. The Yankees beat us for the division. Like, let's say the guardians go in the Astros win the division or something like this. And then, you know, there are like the twins in the AL Central and the AL Central is not a great division. Uh, there are many years where the AL Central is sort of the weak division out of the five. I'm sorry, out of the three in the AL. Um, but the twins are like just, a you know, a few games behind us. So, um, you know, it's not inconceivable that uh, the twins uh, end up being like the four right now i think that a lot of things would have to go wrong for the orioles to be in that situation but those sorts of scenarios are still possibilities right so it is important you know i know i was talking about the orioles just sort of playing around 500 to even make it into the playoffs but going up the the sort of the seed ladder of the playoffs um, is beneficial for home field advantages, of course, all these sorts of things. So, um, yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we, uh, it, it's just, uh, thinking about this last final push that the Orioles have to undergo. I'm hoping, and part of my, you know, 
part of what I'm hoping. Uh, I think that there are, uh, you know, currently it feels like this team, at least with segments of the team, um, is feeling and experiencing some sort of fatigue. And, you, I, you know, at least I think about that predominantly with this offense right now. Um, the offense is just like not been dynamic, has not been interesting uh, other than, you know, sort of the usual suspects, uh, Santander, Kowser, et cetera. Um, you know, the offense has not looked great. Um, and, you know, I should say holiday too. Um, but uh, so, um, yeah, it, it's it's been, you know, so I'm thinking about fatigue and the Orioles the rest of the way do have more off days built into their schedule. So hopefully there can be some sort of like recovery process and it's possible like the Orioles are still like to some degree suffering the effects of their June schedule um, or I'm sorry, their was it their June or July schedule it had to be their June schedule. Um, but uh, yeah, so um in any case, um, yeah, so there's a lot um, sort of, although, yeah, 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 their June schedule, of course, yeah, um, when the O's had one off day. So uh, I still think, like, you know, because even though it's not, like, directly, you know, they've had plenty of off days, and it's like, sure, they have, but it's like, you know, getting one off day uh you know, you sort of have to recover. There's like more expected out of like a recovery period. It's not like everything resets after one off day. You know, there's lingering, uh, not even injuries, but lingering tensions and pains and, you know, uh, in the bodies and stuff like that, that are experienced and felt. So, uh, hopefully like, as the Orioles like have a schedule that begins to like integrate and, you know, sort of build more off days into the schedule. The Orioles had an off day uh, today on Monday, the 12th. Now they do play, you know, plenty of games in a row here again. Uh, and they have another off day on the 26th. Uh, but in September, they definitely have a few different off days. Um, on the 5th, on the 12th, on the 16th, the 23rd. So um, hopefully, you know, with those off days, um, they'll be able to sort of like return to a little bit of the form that they showed earlier in the year. So, um, you know, things don't look ideal right now. Um, and the Orioles are in this really, really competitive playoff race that is like headed down to the wire. Um, you know, it's sort of debatable uh, how much uh, that division means, but I do think it is extra important uh, that we think about, um, you know, we think about sort of the difficulty the Orioles have had with the schedule. Uh, as I've said, like this looks like to me, at least the offense in particular, not as much like the pitching, Although I think there are definitely certain members of the pitching staff that you could argue look fatigued. But overall, you know, we're thinking about the offense looking fatigued and three, four off days could be really, really critical um, and really beneficial official uh, like to a team that is struggling for, you know, uh, feels like it's sort of behind the curve in getting the proper rest and being able to sort of uh, play a normal, uh, I say quote unquote normal baseball schedule because a baseball schedule by itself is very, very just naturally grueling and enduring. Um, so 162 games is no joke. The practice every day, you know, you're on the field hours and hours stretching and throwing, et cetera, before the game starts. So, um, yeah, baseball is a grueling, grueling sport, but, um, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, but so, uh, that might be extra incentive, uh, potentially for like the Orioles to be trying to get that playoff, uh, 
bye in the first round and really be able to sort of recover headed into the playoffs. So as I said, maybe that's not actually borne out by, you know, the limited data and and information we have. Um, so it's a little unclear, not sh- sure, uh, what actually is best. I don't think anyone really knows that, but, uh, definitely, I think if you're an O's fan, you should be hoping that the Orioles get that, get that buy in the first round and not feel too scarred from last year's. So coming up, uh, we do have two at home against the nationals before the Boston Red Sox come into town for a division rivalry. So we have a six game homestand before heading out on the road. All right. So uh, make sure you follow the show. Uh, Feel free to give us a five star rating and review. We also have a YouTube channel, uh, so feel free to go subscribe to us over there, like our videos, uh, feel free to comment uh, with any thoughts. Uh, if you have um, yeah, anything you want to get in contact with us about, feel free to email us at thewarehousepod at gmail.com. You can feel free to follow us on Instagram and on Twitter at the Warehouse Pod. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thanks to the sponsor of this video. This has been the Warehouse Podcast. My name is Jesse and go O's.